Morning everybody, how are you today? Um, well, we're busy again, aren't we? Uh, right, so hello Shelley, Kate, Shirley Jean, Joan, Cherry Sue, Diane, Jackie Sue, Jane, Sally, and on Facebook we've got Jill first in morning and Sylvia. Hello, come and say hello. This is the first time you've joined us today. Come and let us know. Are you one of the, the silent watchers that watches every week but doesn't say anything? Um, come and say hello to us this morning. Hello Sally Jane, have we done that one? I think we might have done. Linda, Cheryl, Anne, um, hello everyone, and uh, Julie, Zakaya, oh hello, Sheila, Hazel, June, Annie, Carol, uh, Carol's in France, nice and crisp this morning, isn't it? It's a bit slippy out there, so be careful if you're out and about. Um, I love the frost when it's all sparkly, it reminds me of Christmas cards when I was a kid, chucking lots of glitter all over them. Um, I may have to put the heater on in a minute, so... Just bear with us because it's freezing, but it does sound like, I don't know, the sea or something. So um, apologies in advance. I will need to put that in this out. It's really cold down here. Um, Sheila's got fog. Thank you very much, Shirley. It's a dress. Um, Sandra, hello. Rosina and Jean, hello to you too. I've got a bit hooked on fabric slashing, so we're going to make a mug mat or chenilling as it's... Do you know, sorry, I'm going to have to put this heating on. So cold. Bear with me a second. I'm going to see the top of my head. I'll just do that and plug that in. So I may have to keep explaining what the noise is. <laughs> no, surely I didn't finish the top. It's still here because I had um, a day at Croton Cr Craft on Thursday. Then I had meetings after that. And then we were so busy on the website. Um, I went down to help out on Friday. So I'd, I haven't had a chance to do it yet. Um, hello, Layla. Oh, what a lovely name in Sweden. Hello. Um, Helen's, it's Helen's, what's your husband's name, Helen? We'll say hello to him. Uh, Frosty in Lincolnshire. It is. I love it when it's like this. It's all sparkly. Bob's actually sitting outside with a bone as well. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. I don't know if you can get us right on my feet. Oh, that's, that's really nice. <laughs> hello, Sarah. Anne's in Cyprus. Sunny there. Um, Fee's chilly. Morning, Robbie. Morning, Anna. Yes, yeah, so anyway, got a bit carried away with it. So the, the two little bags I made here, one is... Um, a YouTube video and the other one's one of the short videos just to speed up the um, the technique if you didn't want to sit all the way through it but it's not it's not something I've invented and it's not something new I actually made a tote bag on YouTube years ago years and years ago um, with a heart shape um, slash fabric on the front like that and there is a clutch bag which is a slightly different design with these it's got a flap on it on there as well but you know when she when she do something and um, and you really like it and then you just do it over and over and over again. So this one is only slashed around the heart, but I have quilted the rest of it. So I thought we'd do that. I'm in, in the mood for Valentine's. Well, do you know, I, I just love hearts, to be honest, all year round. We don't, don't really do Valentine's. Um, <laughs> yes, Tina. Well, a couple of hours. Not, not, not too bad, actually. So, yeah, signing all of those books. I did get an achy wrist. Uh, whereabouts in fact oh talking to each other just taking a photo of a frozen cobweb oh I know Amanda love that when you see all the frost on the cobwebs we've got um, iron gates as you, it sounds grand doesn't it as you come up uh, into the driveway and I haven't looked this morning but on a black on the black raw time when the spiders webs are all frosty they're amazing they are I, I don't want to touch one but they are amazing amazing creatures I can never hurt one um, I did get Gary to take them out of the bath and pop them outside if there's any in there. However, and I'm, I'm quite partial to a tarantula because they're like mice. They're not. They're not like spiders. So I, I have, I have come into contact with tarantulas on a couple of occasions, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Strange. Um, it's the it's that it's the big black house spiders I don't like. The ones with the really big long legs and they move really really quickly. Oh. Um, I listen to the ocean sound for relaxation, so apologies if I nod off. <laughs> You've got a couple of parcels coming, Sarah. Um, caught live after three months in Australia. Oh, welcome along, Carol, catching us live. Elizabeth in Ontario in Canada, wishing you a wonderful day too. Um, while, while we're talking international, if, you've, if you're outside the UK and you've ordered anything from us from the website, there is a delay because apparently Royal Mail have had a cyber attack. So the problem we have is that a lot of the parcels that were being shipped abroad are sitting in a sorting office waiting to go. Can't get them back. Um, any international orders that we're taking now and from 
I think Thursday onwards, um, we're going to be sending out with a different courier. So there will still be a delay because I need to open an account with a courier that will ship abroad. Um, sorry, Rita, y yours is one of the ones that will be going courier. I just need to um, to sort out an account with a courier to ship abroad. DPD is far too expensive. So it may be every, it may be global. I think I might go global. What do you think? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get it to you as soon as we can, Rita. Actually, it might not be a bad thing um, going forward because um, Royal Mail don't track when they ship abroad. But if we can find a different courier, then that, that at least we can trace where your parcels are. Um, what was that? A Thailand tarantula in our room on holiday. John thought it was his sock. Oh, he didn't go to wear it, did he? Urgh. DHL. Okay, Rita, we'll have a look at that one as well. Thank you. Morning, Blodwim. Hi, Joy in New Zealand. Yeah, I've had, it's disappointing, really, because we have so many shipments, particularly to the States. Um, and there they all are. So, uh, as, as long as I, I can keep you informed anyway. So, I am very good, thank you, Andrea. How are you? Got some new stuff to show you. These are the poppers I forgot to show you last week. So, they're, they're quite handy, actually, because they're, they're plastic poppers on ribbons. So, your choices are black and white. These are ideal for, um, you know, if you're making duvets, pillowcases, back of cushion covers, little girls um, or boys, jackets and um, hoodies and things like that. They need fasteners down the front. Um, if you haven't got the whole system with the poppers, this is a great alternative. And you just sew them in. I would sew down each side and then maybe sew across as well, just to make sure. Um, particularly if it's on outerwear that you're going to be opening and closing quite a lot. And of course on Maddie's jackets, and Robin's jackets as well, if you're making dolls clothes, those are perfect as well. They come in two metre pieces. So, and again, we've got black and we've got white available for you. Hello, Helen, doesn't matter your legs. Hello, Lee and Susan and Janet. Hello. Hello, Nell. Good day. Good day from Oz. Um, for baby clothes. Yes, perfect. Hi, Ellen. Just been watching a clip of you inserting a zip into a cushion cover back as my son wants me to make a draft excluder. Nice. Thank you. I hope you find it useful. Um, I used to be scared of spiders until I held a tarantula at a garden centre pet shop. It was so soft. Yeah, I, d I don't mind the big ones and they don't move very fast. And I, when I was holding it, it felt like, just felt like you're holding a mouse. I like mice. It, I thought that was fine. It's the, it's the little ones that you uh, uh, could run up your trouser leg. Ugh. Those are the ones I don't like. Uh, Sharon's been going through my back tutorials, getting some goof ideas for the coming year. Oh, good, I think that should be. Thank you. Great choice, and go, enjoy going through them. Okay, back catalogue on YouTube. There's a lot there. We've got over 400 videos. I think over 400 videos. Leave them on and use like a zip. If you want the sliders to meet for a bag, then take off two and turn to face each other. That's a good idea. Morning, Christine. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, calico for the skin to start with. Yes, Helen. Um, Calico's a, I haven't got any here. We will have some on the website soon, I think. Um, it's a looser weave than cotton and it's got a nice um, organic kind of texture to it. Um, sometimes you'll have little flecks of, of brown which are part of the, the cotton um, seeds, seeds, pods. Um, so it just have a very natural look. Parcels to go, they're the cheapest I've found. And it's like, oh, the, the other end is so, and oh, oh, that's interesting. Parcels to go. Are you watching, Gary? Can, can you write these down? Because I haven't got a pen. Let's have a look at DHL and parcels to go, if that's OK. Freck yes, freckles with head of calico, Helen. That's such a good idea. Uh, was there a, a cat dotting around your earlier videos? Yes, um, I did have three cats and the dog as well. So yes, they, they were always there. They were, they were old ladies. Well, two old ladies and an old gentleman, and they're, they're no longer with us now, unfortunately. Um, Lorraine's just reunited a stray cat with her own. Oh, how sweet. Oh, how rewarding is that? I bet she was, or he was absolutely over the moon. Um, Helen says, the half yard club is the best thing I belong to, but don't tell my... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> right. Fabrics as well. You know what I was saying on Wednesday, we had some new fabrics and they were so soft. I didn't actually realise until I undid the bolts this morning, because I'd say I'm not, I'm not in charge of buying, um, that Kim's ordered flannelette. Oh, so soft. We were talking about this the other day, actually. Um, 
because Gary said um, how much Kim used to love flannelette sheets when she was a kid. And I said, well, so did I. And Kim says, I still do. Um, but flannelette, brush cotton, in other words, it's, it's perfect for for baby quilts, for anything to do with children, for you know, for clothing, anything like that, for the backing of a quilt would be absolutely perfect. It's so very, very soft and it's 100% cotton. It says not in children, in, um, intended for children's sleepwear. You'll find any fabric you buy has that on it, just in case. I think that's covering the backs. Um, Jeanette says, if I join the Half Yard Club from Spain, could I order fabrics to be delivered to a UK address? Jeanette, the Half Yard Club is international. There is nothing to buy from the Half Yard Club. There's nothing to post out. So you can join from anywhere in the world. We have members in Dubai, South Africa, um, in, uh, loads in, uh, in America and, and Canada, in New Zealand, in Australia, all around Europe. We, we are completely international. The website, which is the shop, is Debbie Shaw Sewing. So they're two completely separate websites. Half Yard Club is a club. That's run by myself and my publishers. Debbie Shaw Sewing is run by myself. Well, it's, it's the family, um, Gary, Kim and Tyler. Um, completely separate. So Debbie Shaw Sewing is a shop. And yes, we do sell internationally. We've got a problem at the moment, so it might be a bit of a delay. But yes, we do. So completely separate. So feel free to join the Half Yard Club. If you don't want to join the Half Yard Club, if you just want to buy fabrics, then go to Debbie Shaw Sewing. You can buy them from there. Um, hello, Lema in Latvia. Hello. Um, hello, Ginny Jones. Lanolette. I don't know. I've not heard of Lanolette. Flannelette, but not Lanolette. Um, or brushed cotton. Same thing. It's literally brushed until it just goes really, really soft. Um, I wish I had small grandchildren. Blood when you don't need small grandchildren. Make yourself something cuddly. Um, oh, oh, thanks, Ellen. Um, I made, did I not, from flannelette somewhere. Um, you know those like, uh, raggy type of patchwork? So you sew a few layers together, um, and or a couple of layers. Yeah, a couple of layers, be enough maybe one, um, so them, so squares, uh, wrong sides together with a, uh, say an inch seam allowance and then snip into the seam allowance so it goes all fluffy. And this kind of fabric is beautiful. It makes really nice cushions. I made a cushion like that. Um, wish I had a small, oh, done that one. Rag, that's the one, a rag quilt. Yeah, that, that, that'd be really nice for a rag quilt. Um, some of the old fashioned popper strips, they're press studs on a strip. I think that's what these are that we've got, Susan. Um, got got to order the nursery fabric now to go with the nursery panel and the wadding that's just arrived. Huh? Hello, Carla in Ontario. So, so those are the two options um, by the half meter. So they come joined up if you order more than one, and they are part of a collection. So they they go together really nicely as well. Now then, I also wanted to show you the um, the Van Gogh panels because we've got those now in stock, not on pre-order. Uh, that, oh, for a hot water bottle cover, Diane would be perfect. That would be so cozy. Hi, Patricia. Scrappy cushion on YouTube. Just, uh, oh, right. It's I, on YouTube. I forget what I've done, you know. So that's that. Now, these are, originally we were going to do them in half meter pieces. They're, they're pre-cut. Um, we've decided to do them in one meter lengths, but cut down that way because I think it makes them more versatile. So that's the size of panel that you're going to get. So it's a metre long by just over 70 centimetres wide. I've got that upside down, haven't I? There you go. All Van Gogh paintings. And it comes to you with a piece of royal blue fabric which matches perfectly in the same size. So again, that's a metre by 70 centimetres. Oh, you can see through that. Look, I've got a really bright light behind me, so shows through. So that's that. So uh, again, 100% cotton, but the colour, I, I, I couldn't think of a better colour to go with the panel than the royal. So you're getting one of each of those, 19.99, which is pretty good because panels are normally £17.99 for 45 centimetres. So you've got a lot of fabric for your money there. And you may recognise, the sunflowers aren't on here, but you may recognise some of the, the paintings. 
I know my five-year-old granddaughter probably knows all of them off by heart because they're learning about Vincent van Gogh at school at the moment. It's funny, Kim came home, um, brought Vina home from school, uh, came home from work the other day, I was saying this on Create and Craft, and um, she'd, uh, she'd made a, a drawing of lots and lots of flowers. And, and uh, Kim says, oh, that's a pretty picture of flowers. And she says, it's a Claude Monet, five years old, aren't it? Smart kid, that one. Um, so again, a metre long, it's, it's huge and seven centimetres wide. So homewares, it is a massive panel, Linda. Um, cushion covers, um, the pencil case and brush roll that I made out of these for the kits for Create and Craft are available as downloads on the website as well if you wanted to make those with the panel. You have so much left over. Um, book covers, I think, would be ideal. Um, well, whatever you think, cases, bags. A handbag, you can make a big bag out of that, couldn't you? You could make a bag that's practically that size. Anyway, that's that. Claude Monet is what did I, what did I say? Anyway, um, freezing in South Wales. Jean was watching some of my 30 plus Create and Craft YouTube last night. Dog bed, stationary stand, laptop bag, very good. Thank you very much. The only thing with those. The videos that I did for Create and Craft, they were for the old Create and Craft, and a lot of them had links to um, pattern pieces and sizes and things which don't work anymore because old Create and Craft are no longer around. Um, I don't have them, I'm afraid, so um, hopefully be able to work them out. Um, hello, Mina in India. Could be very cheeky and ask if you remember the cream fabric. Oh, I forgot. Oh, Irene, what am I like? Oh, yes. Um, oh, I do need to write. Let me get some paper and write things down. I'm getting dreadful at this. Um, I need a PA. Hmm. Right. Irene, cream fabric. Cream fabric. DHL. Parcels to go. Right, sorry. Um, oh, look, I wondered what that noise was, Lois. She's making a ginger steam pudding. Ooh, nice. Oh. Uh, one last night in Flannel, like Toby said it was lovely and soft, and it was the half yard sewing club one this month. Last night in Flannelette. One last night in Flannelette. Oh, oh, the hot water bottle cover. Oh, lovely. Uh, hello, Chell in Australia. She's grumpy with COVID. Makes you grumpy. Hopefully it's not too much of a serious one. Uh, Helene's to join the Half Yard Club about two years ago, and I love it. Thank you, Debbie and Seam. Thank you. Feeling sad, my 50-year-old daughter, daughter's... My 50-year-old daughter died yesterday afternoon. Oh, no, Carol. Oh, so we're, we're all... Thank you for coming here. And we're all thinking of you. So can we, can we all have some love sent over to Carol, her daughter died just afternoon. That's, that I can't imagine what, uh, that's, that's so sad. Um, oh, right, Rena, go, go on, go on. <laughs> Leslie will take my job as my PA. I would drive you mad, Leslie. Question please, Sarah. I know it's a big ask, but with all the orders you deal with, can you remember who you sent my buddy book and wreath out with? It was sent on the 11th and I haven't received it yet. Um, Sarah, I don't know. I'll have to write that down. Muddy book and wreath would have been Royal Mail. Check who sent. Send you another one. Send you another one. Um, you get in lots of hug scents, Carol, on. Um, on YouTube and on Facebook as well. I don't know if you can see both. So yeah, we're we're thinking of you. Um, that just says can't be as bad as the one I have now. <laughs> right, that's that. Quick mention. I know you've seen these before, but I still get questions asking if we have them. Yes, we do have the rabbit panel in aubergine. I think we might have some in olive left as well. That's what I made the cushion at the back with. The pattern for the cushion is the same as the Eden tree cushion. 
um, download on the website. So it's it's the same same thing, just different printer fabric. These are one and a half meters wide and forty five centimeters long. So we have the rabbits in stock, the brand new navy of the Eden trees we do have in stock as well. So I'll just go through these quickly. I think these are £17.99. Remember, you get your 10% discount if you're a club member. So that's the navy with an off-white background and a random red tree every now and again. And Maddie panels are still on pre-order, but they should be going out early next week. We've had to have more printed because they were so so popular. Um, so this one is the blue. Your Crate and Craft orders will have all gone out by now, apart from the pre-ordered ones. And again, they'll be going out early next week. So that's the blue. So just the panel on its own. If you bought the kit from Crate and Craft, that would have been everything that you need to make the Maddie Caddy. But if you wanted to make that yourself, we don't have the kits on the, on the website. We won't be doing that. Um, but we do have all of the materials that you need. So you'll need half a metre of Bosal, half a metre of, I've used the pink, um, craft cotton blender, I think it's called, but pink works really well and blue works really well. And two, we don't have those, you'll need two 15 inch zips as well if you wanted to make that. So that's the blue, and this one is the aubergine. So that's that, okay. So good morning. Oh, thank you very much, Krista. Uh, mine's on its way with my buddy bag kit. Lovely. Lorraine says, beautiful. Thank you very much. Went to see a Van Gogh live exhibition in Sydney a couple of days ago with an eight-year-old granddaughter. Oh, I bet that was amazing. Um, can't find the paintings, fabric or the navy to go with it. So let's have a look. Let's have a look where I put it. I shouldn't be allowed on this website, you know. I was looking at um, Amazon this morning while I'm just looking for this. And it's, it did make me laugh. Um, that you know I've written a book called So Gnomes, which isn't going to be out. They've got it on, on August 31st, but it is available on pre-order. It hasn't even been proofread yet. Um, <laughs> uh, new, new arrivals. When you go onto a book, any book, and you scroll down through all of the details, this is on Amazon, it'll give you the Amazon um, listing. So where in the top 1,000, I think they give you. Um, and it's, it's just a nice occasion. I think Maddie's been at, on, at, at number one in four, um, four, four categories, which is, which is really special. But I had a look on, at, at the Gnomes panel because it did go quite high in the charts on the patchwork on, uh, section for some reason. But it is at the moment at number 711 in scientist biographies. I don't know why. But it did make me smile. So I'm on, on the website. Let's have a look. Search Van Gogh. So let know. I think it's called Gogh Gallery. G-O-G-H search. So it's a Gogh Gallery panel with royal, plain royal blue fabric. So if you just search, go into to menu and search products and just put in G-O-G-H. And it'll come up with golf gallery panel. That's the one. It's Linkedin sewing exhibition. Yes, Dawn. I'm planning to go there. Me and Kim are going. Um, that's the, the one in March, isn't it? Is it 20, 23rd to the 26th? Some want to say something like that. The 20 something. Um, and me and Kim will be, Kim and I will be on the, um, we've got a half yard sewing club stand with Search Press. So I'm going to be there for the whole four days. Um, I think Kim will try and be there for the whole four days as well. Um, but it might not be from opening to closing because I might want to go shopping while I'm in London. So um, I, I'm going to say from about 11 till 3. So come and say hello. You can join the club while you're there. They're going to be doing some special offers. Um, thank you, Joan, from Oman. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so yeah, come come along and say hello. You don't have to come and buy anything or be a member or anything like that. But if you happen to be anywhere near London um, on those dates, it's the Stitch Festival at the Business Design Centre, I want to say, in Islington. It's a nice show, actually. Um, oh dear, I've just lost my connection to YouTube. 
Don't know what happened there. I haven't touched anything, honestly. Um, we'll come along to the Stitch Festival. Went last year, but empty due to COVID. Oh, so I haven't been for a couple of years. Um, so, Laura, can I use continuous sip with two slides? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can use uh, continuous sip. That's, uh, that's a good idea. I'm still there. It went all black, Jenny Grace Jeanette. It went all black and said, you have lost connection. Reconnecting. Mm -hmm. Oh, Linda's going to be there in Islington. Is there a pattern for what? Oh, the mice. Amanda, those are next month's Half Yard Sewing Club projects. So uh, if you join up now and go for your free months, use the word welcome in capital letters when you get to check out. And um, those will be loaded on the 1st of February. So there's videos for it as well. There's videos for the mice. Mice. <laughs> mice. Um, videos for there's a video for the mice there's a video for the pajamas and then there's an extra pro project which is a sleeping bag that I made for them as well um, hello Carolyn Melbourne mm, YouTube's okay don't know what happened there then should we do some sewing that's what we do isn't it morning Debbie Baxter um, oh Sally's going to be there as well oh let's have oh what can we do we can't really do anything can we um, we could all go and have a cuppa somewhere. I don't know if they have, I don't know if they do, th there's a place outside, isn't there? There's a place outside. Let's, we'll come over onto the stand and we'll see how we are. So if you come over round about lunchtime, um, might nip outside. I'm sure as you come out of the centre on the left hand side, there's a, a bar or a cafe or something. We could go and have a cuppa, couldn't we? You don't fancy doing that? Um, oh, it's not just me. Kate says there was a glitch, but I'm back. Hi, Nikki. Nikki Fountain sounds like a rock star. Um, Sally's going to try and make it too. Hi, Jean. Uh, Dorothy's just got a pink parcel. Plush. Fl I know, Dorothy. We've got more on order. That that, that uh, plunch, plush, plush fleece was amazing. Um, I'll make us a cuppa in the van in the car park. <laughs> You're on fee. We'll all crowd down to your van. I uh, wish we could have come to see you. We need more notice, though, to clarify across the pond. I, I was, yeah, we only decided a couple of weeks or so ago. Um, there is a bar, cafe, would be at the weekend. Yeah. Half yard meet up. That would be nice, wouldn't it, Helen? They come in near Dartmoor. No plans at the moment, Blodwin. Um, <laughs> Karen's got a, a head of cotton wool. What bag? That bag is the Eden bag which we did on Crate and Craft. We've got the panels. I'm not... Have we got, I've got that as a download. Let me have a look. Um, menu, downloads, pencil case, Maddy bag, Christmas stocking, bam, 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 bam. No, I can add that as a download on the website. But we haven't got those handles. You'll have to make your own handles for it. But I'll, I'll have a look at doing that. Um, we could all go for a gin. Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and there's me on the stand. Like, what's on the off yard club? It's lovely. Can you imagine? Um, I went to put toast in the teapot. <laughs> Joining you from Seattle is Penny. Hello. Welcome along. I can't have gin when I'm working, honestly, you lot. You'll have me flat on my back. Um, your numbers, Gary, could get a tea urn on. <laughs> Are you still going to Franklin's and Ipswich? Yes, I am, Barbara. That's on the 11th. I'll be there from, I think, 10 o'clock till half past three, and Kim's going to be with me there as well. So 11th of November. You could cover for me and sell the club. <laughs> I, I don't know if I trust you not to give it away. Right. Let's do some sewing. Hi, Jan. Uh, don't tell Debbie that you have been cleaning. Oh, 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 oh cleaning on a Saturday. No, no, well, I'm on a Saturday. Hello, uh, Rose, is that in South Carolina? Welcome along. Yes, to download, love the bag behind me. Okay, I shall, um, I shall look into it. Um, it's not, oh, forgot my ironing board. Oh. I've got two. That's what happens when you take stuff to create and craft. 
I'm going to fashion an ironing board out of a big wad of fabric. Mind you, it doesn't really matter that those are creased up anyway. Let's not do that. I'll iron them later. Right. So, um, no, no, no alcohol while working, Ruth. No. <laughs> it's not me. I, didn't, I never even mentioned this. This lot. They'd have me on the gin at 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. I'm going to iron that. They don't need it. So I have done a quick video for this. Oh, I was saying about the downloads. Um, Boogie the schnooky. Hello. Have you been on the gin already? Think you meant February. Did I say November? Did I, did I say November? What am I talking about? February. It's in a couple of weeks. February the 11th. I shall be in, um, in Ipswich at Franklin's. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. An ironing board and a coffee. Making a calosa. A calosa dish carrier. Calosa dish? What's a calosa dish? Can't wait to get my sloth ironing board. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, Michaela. Anyway, the downloads. Um, when we have them printed out, they're printed out in A3 and folded in half because they're quite big. So we need to go back to the graphic designer to put those to split it down into two A4s so that you can download them and print them out in A4 paper. So that's that's the that's the delay. That's why we can't just do it. Um, Barbara just heard it as February. Angela, we are making a mug mat. I'm getting quite carried away with slashing fabric. You know, don't you ever do that? You, you just do something. I want to do that on every project now. Um, nice restaurant next door. Don't know if I have time to eat, but we could have a coffee. Casserole dish. Mm. Of course, Julie. When did I do one of those? I've done one of those. Not for YouTube. I'll have a think about it. There's one in a book somewhere. Um, Sally's starting Maddie today. Need to make a heart template. Um, I've done these a hundred times before. Oops, I use those scissors. Um, so I'm not going to explain it now, but I was talking to Kim earlier on this morning. And because I love hearts so much for applique or for bag shapes or anything like that, I love hearts, um, then I, I, I have figured out lots of different ways that you can make your own hearts, but we are going to put some heart-shaped templates on the website. Again, when it comes like to, to do them all properly and graphically and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they'll be free. So we'll have some free downloads. Um, right. Oh, be nice to see you there. I'm from Cyprus. That's my notes from previous. So I'm just going to kind of fashion a heart. Um, which is going to be around about four inches big. And that's just folded in half and then cut around in a circle like that. Um, but again, I'm not, not going to go into that now. And that is going to go just to one side because I want to put my mug on one side here. No, I've, I've got my list here. That was an old list actually which I've put in a cupboard, so that didn't happen, did it? So enough room to put your mug on here, so we just put it over to the left-hand side, and I'm using um, a friction pen, so heat-erasable pen, just to draw my heart around there. Then I've got three pieces of fabric here in different colours, so I'm going to have... What have I got on this one? Pink at the back, because you do see that one. And it's quite nice to have a colour that really stands out. So the purple is, is going to pop against this one. And then I've got the aqua coloured one on the top. So that there, that there. It doesn't matter that they're creased. I'm going to chop them, chop them up anyway. And that one on the back. So all facing upwards. Hi, Debbie. And let's pop that on the top there. Do you know, we, we were talking about this, Michelle with my, actually I might, might revisit this one. You know the Builder Bag books with the plastic templates about doing one with heart templates with lots of projects and with hearts on it. Mm, I think I might revisit that one with them because um, I was thinking about doing a circle one as well. Right, I'm just going to sew all the way around the edge of here. 
with quite a small stitch so I'm on a 2.2 on this machine so remember the fabrics behind here are all facing upwards and make sure that they're all covering the shape of the heart you can kind of see slightly through so nice and slowly around the edge down into the point it doesn't have to be exactly perfect this either which is quite nice so if you do kind of miss the line a little bit don't worry too much about it this fabric by the way is um, I think it's called heart strings there's one with bees on it as well we do still have some of this left love to sew love <laughs> that's a nice idea Chris right let's chop that off there and then I'm going to cut this back fee you've got some more scraps on the way to you by the looks of it so make sure you're only cutting the um, the colored fabric don't don't go all the way through Oh, you silly devil, Deborah! Look what you've done. I've sewn through two pieces of fabric there. Okay, won't get to finish this one then. Not done that before. Right, but you'll get the idea. So again, cut right up against the edge here. It's good job I've done a video, isn't it? I did get it right first time. And make sure you don't cut through that backing fabric. So I've got an extra layer of fabric there, that might, that, it might actually work, you never know. Um, and that's snipping to there. Maddie and Robin's face template would be amazing, definitely buy those, that's, that's a thought. The thing is, they cost a fortune to get these printed and you need a print run of about 10,000. I don't know how many Maddie's faces would sell. Um, and there. Right. Ignore the fact I've got an extra piece of fabric on there. So we'll just get as far as finishing the top. Honestly, too much gin. Not enough, Leslie, I'm reckoning. Hi, Pete. Right, so then we'll take a ruler and I'm going to draw diagonal lines one inch apart. All the way across. Oh, that went a bit off, didn't it? <laughs> Good job it's erasable. That's because I'm trying to read your comments at the same time as I'm drawing. Um, this one was bagged out, but um, you could put binding on. I think binding would be really nice. I just wanted it to be quite a quick project, but binding would, would look good. And... Uh, Good conversation. It is. Uh, it is a good conversation, Janet. I love having these conversations with you. Um, maybe if we should just have the conversation and not do the sewing, then it might not go wrong. Um, the quick on pick. I know, but it took me ages, Jules. I'm just going to do the top bit. I haven't got any more of this fabric with me, else I could just make another back out. Maybe I'd make. Maybe I've got something else. Let's see what we can do. So, one inch across, all the way across. If you're in centimeters, a couple of centimeters. So, and then just across where the heart is, I'm drawing half way down the line. So I've got half inch increments across the heart. You could do half inch all the way across, but I think it makes it stand out a little bit more. Right. And then this is the fun bit because I'm going to, well, I'm not going to sew it first, aren't I? Um, I've got some wadding to go on the back, and this is the heat reflective. Make sure if you scrap piece somewhere to put it back on. No. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a spray. It's 505 to hold it in place, and this is going to go in the middle there. So that's actually going to be my finished size. And then we're going to sew across all of these diagonal lines. So because this is a quilting stitch, again, I can go a little bit larger with this. So I'm going to go up to a 
2.8 will be fine. Oh, and then sew across all the lines. So I'll kind of carry on with that while we have a, a chat. When it comes to the... Let's do another one here. I don't know why I'm going backwards before I go forwards, because I didn't program it to do that. So let's see across there. And then... Well, when it comes to the halfway lines, I just need to reverse backwards. So I keep getting messages saying disconnected, reconnected, so I've no idea why. Um, Ladies, can I ask for some recommendations? Oh, you've gone. The heat reflective batting is a Bosal one and it's thermal, so the silver side up is reflective. I think I've just run out of bobbin thread. Um, I think I've run out of top thread. I don't think it really matters which side you, you put it on. That if you want it to reflect away from something then put the silver side towards it if that makes sense maybe that should have been the other way around um but i'm thinking so it's got wadding on one side and then the silver on the top but i don't i don't think it makes any difference because the the heat will bounce off this side but it'll bounce off that side as well because it's still got the silver on it so anyway but yes that's um, that's a bosal one i'm out of thread look at that pop and i've got another one Wasn't expecting that. I think this one's about to run out as well. Let's just do it. Um, back again. No, Daryl, I don't know what that was. I, I just had a message pop up saying disconnected, reconnected. I don't know. Normally blame the weather, but there's nothing wrong with the weather at the moment, is there? There we go. Love the threading on this machine. Um, if a cube shape could be sectioned into four and the flush is going in different directions. Um, now I've done this on, on YouTube before now. I haven't done this on YouTube. Coffee, latte, why have you got hot piece chocolate. What you got? Why have you got a piece of wood? Um, I've got an idea. I'm going to make um, Maddie a swing. Oh, did you hear that? So a couple of swings, I just need the size of a bum. <laughs> got a big bum. There is another Maddie well. in a bag down there, or Robin's down there. Gary's just walked in with a plank. I don't know if you could hear that. And so what, what are you doing? And he's, uh, that's it, that's the plank. He's going to make a swing for Maddie. Oh, that's a lovely idea. You're going to have to do step-by-steps for it, you know. Oh, no. We'll hear the drilling in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so re-threaded. Let's carry on. Where are the... Kathy, we haven't done them yet. <laughs> um, there, there will be free hearts on the website. We just need to get them designed. So they're not, they're not there at the moment. Um, I need to have a word with my daughter and see how quickly she can do it. But... Um, it's mum time at the weekend, so it might be early next week. Um, Bobbin did have a walk on a birthday, and yes, Gary took her out eventually. Helen, no, no housework going on today. Go down. Um, Gary did clean the windows the other day. More important things to do. It's a nice idea, isn't it, Linda, making a swing? Go and put the kettle on if you like, just sewing straight lines here. Nothing exciting to see. Uh, I was watching the chenille technique on YouTube. I've got a new cutter coming. Oh, you've got, have you got a chenille cutter? They, we, we used to sell those on Sewing Street. They're really good, but the blades blunt really quickly. The tree shape that I'm using, that's a nice idea. Um, oh, Janet's dog's not very well. Oh, positive thoughts, please, sending out to Janice Dog. 
I like to hear of things not being very well. Particularly with your pets, because you can't explain to them, can you? Right, we're, 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 no, we're nearly there, really. Down. So then just across the, the heart. Um, thank you, Anne, for explaining. Meeting with a sewing sister today. Highly recommend having a sewing group. That's a nice idea. Hi, Lois. She's put the, the pudding to steam, so I'm now licking the bowl as there are no grandchildren. So she's licking the bowl because there's no grandchildren here. Someone has to do it. <laughs> we used, when I was little, mum used to make um, cakes and, and puddings every day. We had a pudding. We don't know. Um, Oh, June. Yeah, I w went off on a tangent, didn't I? Um, but me and my sister, one of us would get the spoon and one of, one of us would get the bowl. Right. Fabric sashing on YouTube. I'm sure there is one. But if you're going to do this in two directions, what I would do is... Um, I shan't actually do it, but if you do your squares... I do them at two inches square and then cut across each one of those. So just snip into it, not through the stitches and cutting across and then you get these pointy fluffy bits sticking up. I'm sure I did that on YouTube. Um, well that's going to bug me now, let me have a look. I did it with denim. Sure is YouTube. My channel. And I've just put slashed in there. It doesn't seem right, but that's what I did. Um, talk amongst yourselves for a second. Right. It's um, how to sew. That's the one. How to sew a recycled denim scrappy bag. And you can just see the bag at the side there. So that's got the squares in it. Recycled scrappy bag. And that's the way life looked. And that's the heart shape one I did, the, the faux chenille one. So there's a, there's a couple of different ones on there. And scrappy patchwork. That was the chenille clutch bag. So that was the, the one that I did similar to um, the one with the zip in. So I don't, yeah, I hope you find that. No, you dropped it. Um, whose birthday? Have one of the knee lifter. I've never used a knee lifter, Joe. To be honest. Where am I going? I forgot where I was with this then. Right. Can you explain, please, why your discs don't run when you have sold the right to another company? I have no idea, Hazel. I didn't sell the rights. I never had the rights in the first place. Um, so those CDs um, were made by Crafters Companion, so all I did was, was the projects. I, n I never actually owned them. They were always theirs. Um, it wasn't the best time when I left them, and I have no idea why they stopped working after I left. I have asked several times, and I don't get anywhere with it. Um, so I, I can't apologise enough, but do badger crafters companion because they they've got them. I don't even have the videos for them, um, so no, I didn't. I didn't sell rights. <laughs> Never had the rights in the first place. If you try when when you first put the CDs in there, it'll ask you if you want to use a PC or a Mac. If you're on a PC, choose the Mac users, and that seems to work. From what I've heard, that seems to work. And I think those of you that, who have got in touch with Crafters Companion have been asked to do that as well. Um, but I, I can't even help you out with sending you the videos because I, I just I don't have them at all. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I have had so many questions about it and there's just, there's just nothing, I could, nothing I could do. Don't know about velvet. I think that might fray a bit too much. Um, if you've got a little piece, a spare piece, Jackie, try it and just see what happens. Um, yeah, Linda better not say anything. Um, oh, it's Jeanette. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Jeanette. 
It doesn't do anything. Get in touch with Crofter's Companion, Hazel. See if, see if they can do anything. Oh, Susan. Um, I hope he's just been diagnosed with cancer. Learned on Wednesday the extent of the treatment plan. Then yesterday, my 96-year-old dad has gone into hospital and thinks it might be pancreatic. Oh, dear. Oh, gosh, there's so many people going through some tough times. So we'll, we'll, we'll send you some vibes. It's quite, um, quite nice to know that we're thinking of you, I think. Hope that, hopefully that's going to bring you some comfort. Um, I assume there's not sure how she had to finish the quilting lines. On the hearts, just a couple of reverse stitches, I'll be fine there. Right. This is the fun bit. So we're going to, we're going to slash it. So, now the trick is not to go through the base layer. So let's go for a deep bit here. So, right. So I've just cut through two pieces there and I'm going to cut in between those lines just over the heart. So I've got one, two. Again, don't go too thick. I'm down to the purple and I'm just going to pick up the purple. If you wanted to um, use a, sorry, if you wanted to use a quick unpick to start with, that, that may help as well. But again, I'm just cutting through the top three layers, not the pink one at the bottom. And we're going right up to the seam, uh, the stitches around the heart shape. So I've just exposed that in the background. And we'll do this across all of the lines. So I think once you get that first cut, it's quite, quite easy. So I've only gone through one. Let's go through another. I don't know if my big scissors will get in here. Let's have a look. That's better. And then need little ones to get in there. Just one more layer there. Just again to expose that final layer underneath. Th these don't have to be really neat cuts. We're going to fray it in a minute. Just so I get down to the pink bit there. Um, I'm not cutting through the wadding, no. I've got the the top fabric, then the three coloured layers, and then the waddings behind that. So I'm just going down to the, the back layer of fabric, Sarah. So not through the pink. The pink was the, the bottom one that I put on. Not through the wadding. Um, thank you, Susan. Sweet of you. Right, so I'm just keep going. So nice, always help in so many ways. Thank you, Denise. It's, it's, we're like a bunch of mates, really, aren't we? It's, it's nice. And it's, it's lovely when, um, you know, I, I see names that I recognise and those of you that join me every week. Really appreciate it. It's good for me, too. Um, Karen sending out healing Reiki. Thank you. Right, one more layer here. You could do more layers, but that's a, a lot of cutting. When I made the uh, the bag behind me, um, because that was going from one side to the other, it's a lot easier when you're starting at the end because you can actually see, and I've got the wrong layers there, you can actually see the layers of fabric. Get your uh, scissors under there and then cut all the way across. But because I'm starting from a seam, it's a little bit more tricky to accurately cut just through those layers of fabric, not the bottom bit. So that's why it seems a little bit more time consuming because I'm going over it a few times because I don't want to stick my knife in too far. So again, when you can see the ends of it, it's a lot easier. So this is a bit sharper than those little ones. So one more layer through here. And again, it is quite nice to have that dark colour. Thank you, Peggy. Peggy Sue. Because if they were all pastel colours, it wouldn't. I don't think it would stand out quite as much. 
Come here. There we go. So if you do snip into the pink, um, or whatever colour you're using on the bottom, you're going to see the wadding behind it, which you don't want to see. So if you do cut through it by accident, I'd peel all of this back and just put a little bit of glue on there and stick it back down again. And then obviously leave it to dry. Um, you could, you, I'm going to see if I've got a seam ripper here because I took my posh one to create and craft. So, I don't know, I've not tried it with a seam ripper, but we'll certainly have a go if I can find one. I've always had this problem, haven't I? Losing my seam rippers is why Irene bought them a posh one. But it's still in my sewing box. There we go. We'll have a go. Don't know till you try, do you? Right, you just watch me go wrong with this now. See, I've gone straight through the pink. Yes, you can use a seam ripper. <laughs> To be honest, I think my scissors are a bit easier. I've gone wobbly on that one as well. But it's good to get started. But I have gone through the pink bit at the bottom, which is probably a good chance to show you what I would do if I went through the pink bit at the bottom. Um, I'll take a bit of glue. On there. And a pin and wrap the glue around the end of my pin and where did I cut it? Where are you? That's it. And then open up the pink bit and just shove some glue underneath it and close it down again. It doesn't have to be the neatest thing. I just don't want that to fray even more when I start to scrub it because I don't want to see the wadding behind it. So that will do that. And then I think I'll use my scissors so I don't do it again. Was it there? I've done it twice. Well, I've got, got the wrong bit. Um, so again, a little bit of glue. That was it. Look, that was the one. And just slip it inside there. That's it. There. Okay. So yes, you can use a seam ripper, but be, but be, <laughs> be careful. They're sharper than you think. Right, through the next one. We're almost there. Remember, I have got that extra piece of fabric which shouldn't really be there. That's the one. It's quite therapeutic. I don't know what it's like for you watching me for ages just cutting into fabric like this, but it's um, it's quite a nice thing to do. You know, when you're sitting watching TV in the evening or something, and you just want to sit with something in your hands that's not a biscuit. I need to say thank you for addressing your errors rather than pretending they didn't happen. It's good for us to learn how to address mistakes. Now, this, this learning curve, isn't it? Um, we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be as wise if we didn't learn from mistakes, and I really believe that. And don't you find, I mean, when things go very wrong, and particularly like in my job where I'm trying to come up with new ideas and trying new things out and they never go right first time, wouldn't expect them to. But when you do something the second time round, it's normally so much better than the first time, isn't it? So um, I've said this to Kim before as well, when, you know, when, when she was learning how to sew and things go wrong, so we're just going to have to do it all over again. Oh. But when you do do it all over again and you look back, you think, actually, I'm glad I did that again. And you find that, you find that quite a lot. Don't enjoy doing things twice, but normally does work out better second time round. How you stitch the half inch lines in the heart? Yep, I all I did. Um, who's that? You've gone. Was it Tina? Let me just go back a little bit. Had to get your names right. Um, the 
ball downwards. Is that why I cut it, Peggy? Probably. I'd always use it with the ball upwards. I don't know why. It's just habit. Um, I can't find your comment again. But basically, I sewed all the way across at one inch apart and then just stitched inside the heart at half inch apart. So that's, that, that was quite easy. Um, thank you, Amanda. We're nearly there. Nearly there. Just another layer here. And then two more to go. Didn't think you'd be sitting there watching me chop up fabric for an hour, did you? Just through one layer there, if you don't mind. We were talking about this at um, Crate and Craft the other day, making mistakes. We had um, Paula, who's the crafty lass. I don't know if you saw the show. And not her mistake at all, but um, the needle and her sewing machine came unthreaded about four times and then the foot dropped off. <laughs> and so again, it wasn't her making a mistake. She didn't make any mistakes at all, but that, that's what happened to a machine. And um, we were talking with Becky, Becky Alexander, in the uh, in the green room afterwards, because Paula was saying, "Oh, it, it all went wrong, and you know, the, it kept coming unthreaded." And um, and we were saying, actually, it's quite nice to see things like that happening to professionals because we all do it. And I think it's quite nice to see that, you know, it's not. If it happens, if something happens to you, then it's not that you've got something wrong. It happens to everybody. So I, I think if we were if we were all perfect sewers, or appeared to be perfect sewers, because it is quite easy to, you know, edit out mistakes and things like that. But um, if ev if every expert was perfect, then I think people would feel a little bit intimidated. Personally, should it handle it well, Blodwin? Um, thought it was quite funny really. I, I thought it was quite funny when the foot dropped off. I don't think I've ever had that happen. Needles breaking, you know, machines completely packing up all together. Yep, done all that. But I've never had a foot drop off. Um, Harrogate. I don't think so, June. I haven't got any plans to go to Harrogate. Um, no, I've, no, I don't think so. It's a, it's a long old day out. We should probably include a hotel bill and everything, so um, no, I don't think I'll be at that one. On Crate and Craft is so much in Roman's murder room. I know, we, we did blame um, one of the other guests for sabotage. She wasn't, of course, but you know, it was a bit of fun. Right, I'm just going to iron this now to get rid of those um, friction lines. And I'll re-iron it again when we've scrubbed it, actually because it can help to open these up. So it's basically we're going to give it a good old scrub. If you have a wire brush, not, not too aggressive, not an industrial one, but um, an average scrubbing brush like this one is going to take you ages to do it. If you have one that's got a little bit of wire in it, it happens really quickly. Or if you've got patience, stick it in the washing machine and that frays it. Now, when you cut on the bias, which is why this is cut at a 45 degree angle, it doesn't fray, it goes fluffy. If you were to make the line straight down, um, then it's, you'd, you'd get all of this raggy bits, and which could look a little bit too scruffy, I think, for something like this. So that's why it's cut on the diagonal. So it may take a little while to actually um, fluff up. But you'll get your scrubbing brush and scrub it. Now again, I've got a little bit of wire in the middle of this one, so it is quite aggressive. But this is what we want, and just keep going with it. So you can see that, so I haven't got lots of frayed bits sticking off it. It just gets fluffier and fluffier, which is a really nice effect. And if you're going to, if you're going to use this technique to actually cover the whole of something, it does soften the fabric so much. Makes it nice and cuddly if you're going to make a cushion cover out of it. Chris is so muddy, book has just arrived. Oh, Brenda says if you spritz water, they'll fray easier. Didn't know that one. Uh, would this be good for a machine metal cover? I do, it'd be good for anything. It's just, 
basically a piece of fluffy fabric by the time you finished it. One in Exeter in the past. A quilt show. I think there is a quilt show in Exeter. I've not done that one either. Um, I'm going to go into the one in um, March because um, Half Yard Club have got a stand there. So as soon as it's my club, I thought it better be there. A wire brush, yes. Mine's, mine's got wire on the inside. I think it's a shoe brush. But a little bit of wire, yes, would work well. And then could keep going with that. But then if you kind of press it away in one direction or another. I suppose the steam's helping, isn't it, when you're saying about spritzing. Let's put a bit of steam on it. So that's made it damp. No, it's cool, doesn't it? So I'm pleased with that. So anyway, that's the um, the top finished. So if I hadn't just sewn two pieces of fabric together earlier, um, put the second piece of fabric on top of here, the backing fabric, and then sew around the edge of the um, of the wadding. And that means that when you're bagging it out, you don't have the wadding in the seam. So it's, it's not bulky on the edge bit here when you turn it the right side out. Um, so sew all the way around, but leave a turning gap. And then I cut this fabric down a bit and cut across the corners, then turn the whole thing the right side out. And, it's, um, and then sew all the way around the top. So that's all top stitched around the edge. So that's how that's finished off. But it looks, uh, looks quite impressive, doesn't it? That's not a bad heart considering it's not the same template. I've just realised that's practically the same. Oh, so talented. Um, Peggy, it's chenilling or fabric slashing. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do on Wednesday, because I said once, once I start on this, I'm, I'm hooked on it. I'm going to show you a different technique with it, which you may have seen before. Again, it was in my Half Yard Home book. Um, I did a, it was a heart again, just love hearts, um, a heart shaped applique on a, I think it might have been reverse applique on a cushion cover, and then had a strip of chenille around the edge. So we're going to do that. So it's a similar kind of thing, but you're not cutting into the fabric. Um, so we'll do that Wednesday. Do you have a back to basics for cutting? Sally, oh gosh, I did that, didn't I? Did it, was it in one of the live streams? I haven't got a specific video on that, but I will try and do something. I'll try and do something for the Half Yard Club, actually. Um, my iron is a prim. And I think we've got these back in stock again. We do tend to sell out a lot. Um, how much is a pale lemon? How much pale lemon? Um, I think if you're just quilting it as it is, then half a metre should be okay, I think. Just measure your panel, Alana. I'm, I'm sure half a metre is going to be fine. And you could use a border to finish it. That would be a nice idea, Deirdre. And binding, we thought, might be nice around the edge as well. This is just a quick way of doing this, seeing as I've only got an hour. Do you know, I've put this heater on. My feet are burning now. You can't, you can't win, can you? You can't win. Hot or cold? Um, maybe the double fabric is making it harder. But it's only an extra layer. Just makes it harder to finish the thing when I haven't actually... Got any more fabric? Have I got any more fabric? I don't. But anyway, that's how you do it. <laughs> Seen it doing the bias binding around the applique, so down the middle of it. Yep, that's um, that's basically what we're going to be doing, Maya. Um, only save the baby backpack bags, pattern pieces, and not the instructions. The baby backpack. Oh, is that from Half Yard Club? Um, maybe get in touch with the girls, info at halfyardsewingclub.com and uh, they might be able to help you out there. Cotton or flannel. This is cotton, Lynn, and I used um, one for the top. Then I, then I sewed another one to it by mistake, ignored that one. And the coloured fabric under here, there's three layers. So when I cut through them, I've cut through the top fabric and the first two of the coloured layers. My bottom one is the, um, oops, it better there. So I used um, an aqua and a purple and then the pink one. So I cut through the top layer, aqua and purple, and not through the pink one at the bottom. 
so I hope that helps. Got the same iron in Aldi, £14 made by Silver and has its own bag. That is a good deal. I can't beat that one, Denise. Um, Denise is going to have a go. Jean's going to try to go to Birmingham. Thank you, Lavinia. The powder, they are, those are, there is a, oh, a YouTube video for one of those. If you have a look on my, uh, if you go to YouTube and put in Debbie Shore, S-H-O-R-E, it's one of the most recent videos. It only went on last week. So yes, it's, a, it's exactly the same technique. Um, Helen loves the mug mat. Denise is going to have a go. Fabulous. Okay, well, I shall pop off. Looks like a nice day to walk the dog today. So I might go out and do that before I carry on with some work. Um, so I'll see you again on Wednesday. And we're going to do the skin tone fabric. Yes, I do actually, Nikki, I've got them right here. Um, where I'll do that other chenille kind of effect. And then I think I will have had enough of chenille. These are the Maddie skin tone colours. Almost like we had it planned, isn't it? Um, right, so these are the ones we've got. Sorry they're a bit creased, I wasn't expecting to show you. So this one is called Sand. This is one of the Tilda doll fabrics. This is a, it's a very tight weave. So that's a Tilda. And this one is also Tilda. That is Biscuit. Is that Biscuit? Yes, that one's Biscuit. That's come back in stock today. Um, we've got another Tilda. This one is Caramel. My mud is made from Caramel, the one behind me, I think. Yeah, she's caramel. And this one is, um, oh gosh, that one's mink. And then this is cream. And this one is tan. Rita's ordered a peach linen mix as well, which I meant to bring to, to show you. Um, I'll maybe cut a piece of that off when I'm in the office again on Sunday and, uh, and bring that back because that's quite a nice one as well. Um, yeah, I thought the dark purple biz deliberately. I think it needs something really contrasting to the outer fabric. If it was all pastels, it wouldn't, um, wouldn't stand out quite so much, would it? Uh, 14 by 10. 14 inches by 10 inches for the mug rug. Um, that takes you for a nice walk. It, uh, what I like about it, I don't like the wind, but you get all wrapped up warm and I have hat and gloves on and everything. But where I go walking around the woods, it's very, very muddy. And when the weather's like this, it's solid. So she doesn't come home filthy. So I like that. Um, see you Wednesday, Gina. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like the biscuits and the caramels personally. Um, that sounds like I'm, I'm in need of a snack. Um, I think I've answered everybody, haven't I? Have a wonderful week yourself, Michelle. See you on Wednesday, Sarah. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, everyone. Margaret's using biscuits. Right, so I'll see you again Wednesday. Um, remember those dates if you're anywhere around the Ipswich area on the 11th of Feb. And if you do want to come down to London, just, just pop along to the stand at the Stitch Festival. It'll be the Search Press come Half Yard Sewing Club stand. Uh, it be nice to see you there. Did the dog have a good birthday? She, had a, she has a good birthday every day. Every day, Sally. <laughs> that again, I shall see you again on Wednesday. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.